This presentation today is about fundus florus in angiography and what does a normal angiogram look like? So basically fundus florus in angiography is one technique by which we can visualize the retinal blood circulation and this can be documented in various phases and this was first discovered by two in students in Indiana University. I don't actually remember their names, but this was way back in 1960s when this was discovered and, fun and then later on worked upon and the technique has evolved that now we can have digital fundus photography also available using this fluorescent dye. And this involves use of a dedicated fundus camera which has a excitation and barrier filter. And as we can see here, the dye is injected, 20% fluorescent dye is injected, about 2 ml of this is injected in the cubital fossa veins. And this reaches to the left, uh, to the venous side of the circulation and from there it is pumped into the arterial blood flow and it reaches to the retinal surface, retinal uh, tissue and the blood vessels. One characteristic about this dye is that majority of it is bound into the blood protein so very less is there to leak out from the blood vessels of the retina which are having tight junctions and no dye can leak out, out of it. So basically it will visualize all the normal blood vessels and the dye doesn't leak out so it provides us that contrast and at the same time any incompetent blood vessel which is leaking will have the dye also leaking out and that can be visualized as a leak and also some tissues which will take a stain of this dye. So the technique involves that the white light is pass through the blue ex excitation filter and this blue light wavelength is something like 465 to 490 nanometers and when this is absorbed by unbound fluorescein it changes its wavelength and it gives out a green color fluorescence and this has a longer wavelength which falls in the yellow to green spectrum which is 520 to 530 nanometers and that is why we have that green color fluorescent scene when we have, whenever we throw white light. And this filter basically corresponds to the cobalt blue filter which we have routinely seen in our slit lamps and ophthalmoscopes. And this is the light which is emitted. Now if we place a barrier filter into the path of the incoming light towards us which is reflected from the retinal surface and retinal blood vessels, it will capture only the tissue which is having the dye and that enhances the contrast. So basically the process involves that you inject the dye in the cubital vein and then you wait for 10 seconds and then you start clicking the photos and as the dye comes into the retinal circulation it can be visualized as blood vessels fill up this dye and they reflect the green fluorescence. And this is what we are going to see in this presentation. So again just reminding us that this is the blue filter which is the excitation filter. So it filters out rest of the spectrum and allows only the blue light to go into the cavity of the eye to be incident on the retinal blood vessels. And then this light which is gone inside and is coming out. So then you will have blue light as well as the green fluorescent light which is reflected from the excited fluorescein molecule and then we have a barrier filter which will filter out this blue light and it will only allow the green light to come into the camera and so this will enhance the contrast and we will see. So fundus fluorescein angiography involves various phases this will depend on the blood circulation and first to understand that we have artery then we have capillary and then we have the vein. 
so arterial phase involves that the dye enters into the arterial circulation which is quite fast something like 10 to 12 seconds and then it goes into the capillaries which cannot be individually identified and then we have the veins so this is what the circulation of the retina will consist of in the arterial phase the dye will enter into the artery it can be seen capillaries are empty the veins are empty and then we have arteriovenous phase when the capillaries fill up the vein starts filling up and this fills up from the sides so the central lumen will remain empty for a while and the side will have start having fluorescence so this will appear like a laminar flow and then we have the venous phase when the arteries become empty and the capillaries are filled up and the venous phase then we have the recirculation phase and late phase and we'll go ahead and see all of these phases in this particular uh, normal angiogram of a person so any fundus fluorescein angiography when it is done it consists of few images which are standard before injecting the dye and one of them is the standard color fundus photograph so this is one color fundus photograph and then we have one more photograph which is usually taken with both the filters in place and this will not only check for any discrepancy or leakage of the light but also check for any structure which is auto fluorescence so we have some structures in the retina which will fluorescent without presence of dye so these are two medical students from indiana university mr harold r novotny and david l elvis who described and demonstrated the technique of retinal fluorescent angiography in 1961 and then later on mr john donald mcintyre gas worked on this and started publishing in experience with fluorescent angiography in 1967 so about 6 year time went ahead when we had some publication related to this particular technique so looking at this situation which is arm to retina time and here we can appreciate this photo has been enhanced digitally and that is why we can see these specks of noise here and all around the photo because it has been enhanced but the point here is that we can see the dye entering into the arterial circulation and at the same time we can appreciate that the veins are still empty and they are dark and this is what the arterial phase is about so this is something when the capillaries are still not filled so that is why there is no background fluorescence this is all dark but it has been it is a noise because of the enhancement which has we have taken advantage of so before this arm to retina time or retinal phase the arterial phase we have choroidal phase which is just one or two seconds prior to this and so if we talk about the timing then choroidal phase is 10 to 12 seconds and then we have the arterial phase which comes about 1 to 2 second later and that is 12 to 15 seconds so in this zoomed in photograph we can appreciate the empty veins these are the vein they are empty and these are the arteries which are still having the dye which is causing the fluorescence and they can be visualized then we have the early arteriovenous phase which lasts from 15 to 30 seconds and during this phase we will see the blood flow starts going into the capillaries and starts filling the venules and because the tributaries which join the vein venules and form the major trunk of vein uh, they start carrying the fluorescent dye into the circulation the venous circulation and because the central venous circulation has more cellular structures and the periphery has more uh, plasma part so that is why the portion of the vein start having fluorescence from the periphery and this is also known as laminar flow as seen in venules and this is when the dye has permeated 
considerably well into the venues and you can see this railroad track kind of picture of these veins where we have two lines which are providing us the fluorescence and the central cavity which is empty empty means it doesn't have fluorescent dye yet it does have the blood being in circulation as the time passes by the there's gradual filling of these venules and the laminar flow gradually gets replaced by a more and more central core filling of the blood vessel by the dye then we start having the late arteriovenous phase when this laminar flow nearly disappears and we now have the vein which is nearly completely filled with the dye so here we can see that and we can appreciate that now the veins are more bright compared to the artery so this is the vein this is the artery and this is the vein so continuing with the late arteriovenous phase when artery vein both start having similar amount of brightness and content of the dye and this is the phase about 30 seconds from the point of injection where we can appreciate the foveal avascular zone best so this is that central area where we have no blood vessels because the retinal tissues are splayed apart so we don't have any blood vessel here and that is known as foveal avascular zone which is something like 500 micron in size and it is horizontally oval and can be appreciated best at this time that is 30 to 35 seconds of the angiogram phase and then comes the recirculation phase when we, this will last from about 3 minutes to 10 minutes where we'll have continuous fading of the fluorescence in the arteries and progressively increase fluorescence in the vein and this will gradually fade out as you'll see and here we can appreciate that this is the artery which is less bright compared to the vein which is brighter and then it comes to the late phase when it is 10 to 30 minutes where we start seeing that the dye has gradually disappeared from the circulation but there are few structures in the fundus which take up this dye and this is known as staining and we'll appreciate that here we can see the optic disc this part is relatively brighter compared to rest of the fundus so we can have those structures which will normally naturally stain and we can see them in late phase and this is one of the phases where you can also see the tissue structures which are pathological also taking up stains and this is a very late phase something like about 15 minutes from the point of injection when the dye has nearly washed out and only the tissue which has taken up the stain is seen and those areas which have taken up the stain more markedly are seen as a brighter spot so this is all about what a normal angiogram would look like